Hello, and welcome to today's webcast brought to you by the Center on Knowledge Translation for Disability and Rehabilitation Research, or KTDRR, at American Institute for Research in coordination with the Campbell Collaboration. The Center on KTDRR is funded by the National Institute on Disability, Independent Living, and Rehabilitation Research, known as NIDLR, in the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Administration for Community Living. The Campbell Collaboration is an international organization that promotes positive change through the production and use of systematic reviews and other evidence synthesis for evidence-based policy and practice. The Center on KTDRR partners with Campbell's Disability Coordinating Group to help increase the number of Campbell reviews in the disability field. I'm Joanne Stark with the Austin Office of American Institutes for Research, or AIR, and I'll be the moderator today. I also want to thank my colleagues, Shoshana Rabinovsky and Ariana Hammersmith, who are helping with the logistics. The KTDRR Center and the Campbell Collaboration are working together to offer a five-part training course that focuses on high-quality methods for synthesis of evidence, including the procedures and methods for conducting systematic reviews, as well as software, tools, and strategies for analyzing and reporting data. The next presentation, covering Covidence, will be presented by Nancy Owen, who is head of community management at Covidence. She is responsible for a team providing support to a global community of enthusiastic and engaged users. She has more than two decades of varied professional experience across the corporate, academic, and nonprofit sectors. Fairly focused in evidence-based based health research, publication, and dissemination. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you to the organizers for inviting Covenants to join this event. Uh, as Joanne said, my name is Nancy Owens. I am on, I'm the head of community management uh, with Covenants. Uh, we have a worldwide community support team that uh, provides uh, support and resources to our users who are also based worldwide. And today, I'm going to give you an overview of the platform and the different access models that we offer to individuals and institutions. Um, if you have questions as we go, we'll, we'll be covering quite a bit of information. Uh, as, as has been happening, please feel free to post those, and we can answer them as we're looking at the relevant sections. So I'll start off with this slide, which is a brief overview of how Covenants works. Uh, it's a collaboration platform. It's entirely web-based, um, so it doesn't require any uh, software installation. It doesn't require IT authentication. It's accessible to anyone from anywhere once they've signed up for an account. Um, it is closely linked with the Cochrane Collaboration um, and is the production platform for Cochrane Reviews and has the methodological practices that Cochrane uses to do systematic reviews built into the structure of the program. Um, it is a nonprofit mission-driven organization by, by built and developed by people who are interested in creating a culture of health decision-making being supported by access to high-quality research information. And um, it, our goal is to constantly be evolving to to keep up with systematic review management technology. So I'm going to start by showing you what Covenants looks like when you have signed in, uh, when you've set an, up for an account for yourself and you've signed in to start work uh, at any time. Covenants is an individual user-based platform, so it's, it is, works through access on an individual basis. Each person signs up for an account themselves and they can then use that to link to either review work in process to join teams and collaborate to set up reviews themselves um, or and to link to organizational subscriptions where those are available. And as you can see, when you're logged in, you'll see a dashboard which shows you a running list of all of the projects that you're involved in um, that you've set up yourself, that other people have set up and that you've joined. And that have been set up through any organizational accounts that you might have access to. When you want to start a new review, uh, you could do so simply by clicking the button that you see here at the top of the page called Start a New Review. And when you do that, you'll be taken to a new screen that will allow you to make several decisions. 
Um, as you can see, because Cochrane and Covenants are closely linked, uh, the first question that you will be asked is whether or not you're creating a Cochrane review. There's a special pathway built into Covenants for anyone who happens to be working on a Cochrane review. And for those of you who are affiliated with Campbell and who are working on Campbell reviews, um, there is a there's a slightly different um, pathway that also supports people who are working on Campbell reviews. Um, and it's more linked to what you'll see further down the screen, which is that, as you can see here, um, if your account is linked to other organizational accounts, as you can see on the screen, my account is linked to the Monash University account, and that means that even if I have minimal access through my own individual account, which gives automatic access to instead of one review, if I'm linked with an organizational account, I'm able to access the functionality of that account and create unlimited reviews from the pool that's provided there. And uh, access through the Campbell pathway is, is similar. Um, and anyone who has questions about that, um, feel free to get in touch and we can provide more information about that. And I'll provide some contact information at the end for anyone who wants to get more information from us. Um, so at this stage, uh, what this is providing is, is basically the main question it's asking is, is naming a review, um, and this can be a working title, as you can see in the in the open text box, and uh, can be changed at a later stage. So once you've set up a review project, uh, you'll be taken to the dashboard for the individual review, and this is what you'll see whenever you have a specific review open. And what I'll do now is I'll walk through briefly what the different uh, sections of this are and what they cover and allow the users to do and collaborate with colleagues. Um, up, up at the top, you'll see, I, I will, hopefully this, the pointer is now working, and you can see uh, first, we'll look at the settings, which allows you to set up and configure how the review will work. Next, we'll look at importing references and how that process works in Covenant. Title and abstract screening, full text screening, and extraction, the three successively more intensive stages of evaluating information that's, that is brought into the system for decision making about whether or not it will be included in a systematic review. And finally, when work is complete, uh, a quick look at the export process and how that works. So usually the first stage that we'll recommend people when they start work is to um, go into the settings section of the particular review and do any configuration that's necessary in terms of decision making that's going to affect how the review proceeds. Um, and as I said, this will um, be dependent upon how many people you have working on the review um, and what sorts of parameters you'd like to set up. And there are multiple pages here. I'll just highlight a couple, uh, but I'll note that you can see at the top that you have options for review settings, um, that you can make decisions about how many people are going to be in the review team, um, as well as team settings about what those people will be able to do. And then there are some pages over to the right that will help you to set up some of the features that are available and we'll look at those when we actually look at the screening sections. So in this uh, first page you'll see the review title that was set up at the very beginning point which the review is started. As I said that's a working title which can be changed. Uh, some other key information can be recorded here at, about when searches were run, what the search strategy has been used, review citations if this is an update of an existing review, and decision-making about um, how many people are going to be involved in the screening process at uh, title and abstract screening and full text review. Covenants is set up that people with full subscription access to the platform are able to invite an unlimited number of reviewers to join each review, um, and they can select a minimum of one person or a maximum of two people to screen each reference. And so what that means is that once either one or two people have viewed any specific reference, then it will be moved from uh, the screening section it's in to a number of other places depending upon the decisions that are made. And we'll see how that looks and how it works in, in the screening section. So, in, so what that means in practice is that if a large number of people are involved in a review, that two people, assuming that's the selection made, will screen each reference. But once they have done that, um, 
that it will move and therefore not everyone who's involved in the review process will see each reference. Obviously, a review team of two, everyone will see everything. But beyond that, it will people will do a percentage of the work that's available at each screening stage. And this shows another feature of how work can be managed within Covenant. So you can see here, this is the team settings page. And as I mentioned, um, you can invite a large number of people. It's not, and it, that again is not limited, unlimited um, by location or authentication of any kind. Um, anyone that, that the review team chooses to include, all they will need to do is set up an individual account and they'll be able to join. And once they have been set up and invited to join the review, the team will be able to get an overview of ongoing work in this team settings section. So as you can see, it's possible to track progress on the number of references that are in each section overall, as well as to monitor the contribution levels of each member of the review team. And this is done uh, in such a way as to uh, maintain good systematic review methodology throughout the process. So as you can see, you can get an overview of how many references are in progress and uh, the work that individuals have done, but no information will be visible about how people have been voting on specific references or what specific references have been voted on by particular members of the team. It's also possible, as I mentioned, to set rules at this point. So uh, the team can make decisions about whether or not they're going to allow everyone to do everything or whether there are going to be limitations in terms of designating one particular person to, for example, carry out conflict resolution in the event that uh, two people have conflicting votes on a specific reference, or if they're going to limit uh, that one specific person has to see every reference at a particular round of screening. And you know, one use case that we've often seen is that in the case where um, a senior reviewer, for example, might have a team of more junior people, they might make the decision to have that person screen every reference at the first stage, and in that case, then the other reviewers will end up essentially dividing the remaining votes among themselves while that person will screen, uh, will, will have sight of every reference. And similarly with conflicts, uh, similar decisions might be made, either to have someone more senior or someone who hasn't been as involved in screening to come in and make decisions about conflict resolution when that time comes. So the next section we'll cover is importing references. Uh, once the review team has defined their research question and uh, developed a search strategy and run it and curated a list of references in a reference manager program, they will then have the opportunity to import that uh, into Covidence. And Covidence allows for multiple rounds of imports into any given review project in order to meet the specific needs of that review. Um, there are some file size limitations on a per import basis, but all of that information um, can be imported in as many rounds as are needed. And once those imports have been brought in, then reviewers can uh, do some import management within uh, the context of the review project. So as you can see, um, they can review the list of imports and rounds of imports that have been done here in this import section, um, they can review any information about references that have been imported that might have been designated as duplicates. Covidence has a built-in deduplication algorithm uh, that will deduplicate references both within the batch of references that's being imported into the project as well as against any previous batches that have, have been imported into that specific project. So as you can see, it will identify when it has uh, when it has identified a, a duplicate reference, and the review team can then use the check duplicates function to open that up and check them against each other and make decisions about whether or not they agree with the uh, algorithm assignment of duplicates and whether or not they want to designate them as duplicates uh, in agreement with the algorithm or import them for further scrutiny. And once assessment of the import has been completed, then the list of references is fully imported into the platform and the review team can begin accessing the list of references uh, and begin title and abstract screening. 
references can be imported into any stage of covenants that we'll see today, but um, the usual workflow is that most people will import into title and abstract screening in the first instance. And this is the this is the view that people will see when they open title and abstract screening. They will see the information that's been imported displayed in a list of references, and they will have uh, the title and abstract information in front of them and can make, at this point, a straightforward yes, no, or maybe decision about whether or not they think this information is valid uh, for the research project that they're trying to do. When they Once they voted on the information, this reference will disappear from their screening list, and depending upon how the reviews uh, perimeters have been set up and what decisions have been made, it will go to one of a number of other places. If uh, they are the first person to vote on it, it will go to the awaiting other reviewer list. If And if they are uh, have voted no for the second time, it will go to a relevant references list and be removed from further consideration. If they're voting, have voted yes for this as the second person, it will go to the next section, which we'll see in a minute. And if it is in conflict with the previous vote, it will go to the resolved conflicts list for a conflict resolution decision. And when screeners are working, uh, these lists, these numbers will be dynamic and the list will update in real time um, so that simultaneously uh, members of the same review team can be screening and, and those references will be moving in real time depending upon the decisions that are getting made. Um, there are also some a couple of features which I'll note uh, here that you can see um, these buttons across the top will provide access to various features that are available um, and, and you can see here that it's possible to set up lists of uh, keywords um, in the review settings section that will allow the review team to indicate keywords that they're looking for to support either inclusion or exclusion decisions. You can see here that uh, these are inclusion key keywords that have been highlighted in green. Exclusion keywords will be highlighted in red um, to facilitate the screening process and, and help reviewers to find the key information that they need quickly. Um, you can also pre-populate lists of inclusion and exclusion criteria, which are then accessible by clicking on the show criteria button uh, to allow reviewers to refresh their memories on what they're looking for as they work through the screening list and make consistent decisions. And it's also possible to add tags to specific reviews or batches of reviews that are visible when they've previously been applied here at the bottom of each individual reference. Um, it's also possible to add batch tags to groups of references um, in order to designate a group that falls within the same category. And you can see those here. Um, it's also possible, as you may be able to see here, to add notes uh, to individual references. And uh, these, will be, these can only be done on a single uh, reference basis as opposed to tagging, which can be done in groups, and that information will carry through along with the reference wherever it is moved within the Covenants platform. It is, it's also important to note that um, it will also be visible to anyone who sees that, so any teams that are looking to maintain maximum blinding and minimum bias will need to bear that in mind as they're using that as a tool to support their cross-team work. So reviews, excuse me, references that have uh, had two yes votes on them will be moved to full text review. And as you can see, this interface is fairly similar to uh, what you'll see in title and abstract screening. Uh, it's a more in-depth decision-making process, as most of you will know. And so at this point, the decision changes from yes, no, maybe to include or exclude. And uh, the key feature that's available in Covenants in this stage is that it's possible to import the full text of the relevant study, uh, PDFs of the, that, that go with the relevant uh, references can be imported here uh, so that they're easily accessible for the reviewers to refer to in order to carry out full text screening and make inclusion or exclusion decisions. And one of the features of Covenants that's available with a, uh, with a full subscription to the platform is the bulk upload PDF, which uh, facilitates for large numbers of references being screened at this stage, uh, facilitates the process of uploading PDFs for references in bulk 
from a reference manager program. The third and most intensive level of screening that's available um, is the extraction section, and that provides screening possibilities uh, for both quality assessment and data extraction. So this screen that I'm showing shows what the quality assessment uh, framework looks like when screening is underway. So uh, you will see here that, again, you'll still be able to see the full text of uh, the study in question for, that's accessible for reference, and it's possible to uh, toggle back and forth between that and the assessment framework that you can see here. Covenant supports uh, a built-in Cochrane Risk and Bias Quality Assessment um, or uh, allows the review team to set up a custom risk and bias assessment if they prefer to do that. And they can then use this access to this full text study to make assessments and judgments about what the quality assessment uh, and the risk of bias is in this particular study. They can then, they can also use this to complete data extraction. Uh, there's a built-in data extraction framework, as you can see here, with these preset sections for identification, methods, population, interventions, and outcomes, um, all of which have some preset sections for the information that's likely to be typically collected um, during the data extraction process and also allows for uh, a good deal of customization, um, allows the review team to add multiple text boxes, um, free text boxes that they can designate and label as they need in order to meet the specific needs of their review project as well as um, make customizations in terms of the kind of data they're extracting, which covers any kind of numerical data and can also be customized to gather qualitative data um, and can be anything from, as I said, numbers, percentages, to uh, free text, to capture qualitative information as the review project dictates. This stage will be completed by two reviewers. It's the, it's the final stage of the process, and uh, as the other two stages allow for the choice of one or two. This will require two, and uh, once consensus data has been agreed, then those data can, can then be um, made ready to export. And as import, as with importing, uh, information and references can be exported from Covenant at any stage of the process. The review team can select uh, what they wish to do if they are, if they have completed the full process of quality assessment and data extraction. Then um, they can select to export that information and can export data. And as you can see. They can choose from, from um, several different reference manager formats to support the work they're going to do next. Uh, if they are exporting data, then they can export that as a CSV file for Excel, which you can see here. Um, and you can also see here that there is a built-in pathway for people who want to carry out the next stage of meta-analysis. Um, if they're doing Cochrane or Cochrane-style systematic reviews, uh, there is a built-in pathway to export information from Covenant and import it into Cochrane's Review Manager software to support the next stage of the meta-analysis process. When reviewers choose to export data, it, as I said, it will export as a CSV file for Excel, and they will have a list at the, on the first sheet of included studies, all studies that were designated as included and went through the complete screening and extraction process, and they'll then have a sheet-by-sheet -sheet documentation of the consensus data um, that were agreed and documented for each of the reference of the studies that were designated as included. And as I said, for a, for a meta-analysis program, uh, like Cochrane's Review Manager, this information will feed directly in to facilitate that next step, but uh, reviewers can also take this information uh, and use it in 
other meta-analysis and interpretive processes that they might be using. A few other features to let you know about. Uh, Covenants has a, an extensive knowledge base, um, which has articles providing step-by-step -step information and instruction about most of the steps involved in um, completing screening using Covidence. Um, most of the articles which are accessible from this section also have embedded links to uh, instructional videos that are available on our, our YouTube training channel. And as you can see at the top, we also have a featured articles uh, section which is kept up to date regularly with current information. Uh, including information about uh, our regularly scheduled monthly training webinar, um, which is geared towards people who are usually in the early stages of getting started with Covenants and, and would like a step-by-step -step walkthrough, similar to what you've seen today, but with uh, more in-depth information about what the, uh, the mechanics are of using the platform. And this screen takes you back into what things look like on the platform, and I'll just note, since you can see this visual, that when uh, you're logged into the Covenants platform, you can see this blue header bar from anywhere inside the platform, and you'll always be able to see this question mark icon, and that is the way to access Covenants' knowledge base. Um, it's a, it is a separate website, but it is accessible from anywhere within the platform by clicking on that button. So um, I wanted to give a quick overview of, as I said, Covenants has um, a variety of different access models. It is, it is an individual user-based system, um, but one of the access models that has developed is that we have a number of academic institutions who have set up organizational accounts in order to facilitate uh, their user community having access to Covenants. And so in the event that that happens, um, we then support setup of that account. And um, this is what how, this, how the information will look for someone who is acting as the account administrator uh, for an academic organization, for example, is that um, they will be able to see a running list of uh, members of that university who are affiliated with the account They'll be able to invite people to join the account, uh, and they'll be able to keep track of reviews that are set up. I showed you earlier when an individual user is affiliated with an academic account, they're able to set up a review using uh, access to that account, and when they do that, uh, that review will then appear on this reviews page so that the uh, organizational account develops a repository uh, and is able to see an overview of ongoing work that's being carried out by members of their user community. And this provides an overview of Covenants' access model. Covenants is, is freely available um, on a trial basis, so anyone who's interested can sign up uh, for an individual account and that will provide access to a free trial review. We have uh, single and packaged subscriptions for individuals and um, for the institutional access model that I mentioned, um, we will work with individual institutions to uh, tailor a subscription that meets the needs and the size of the institution. So uh, that covers how the platform works and how our user community accesses it. If you have further questions, um, we encourage people to sign up. Uh, it's free, um, and just no, uh, there's, there's no bar to signing up for an individual account. And when you do that, as I said, you will have access to set up a trial review. Um, you'll also have access to a demo review, which is built into Covenants platform, um, which provides a sandbox to actually work on moving references and practicing the screening processes and how they work. Um, it's populated with live data, um, so it's possible to try out the variety of functions that Covenant offers without having to worry about doing anything with real data that you might want to use in a project. Uh, I've also provided a link here to our knowledge base, which we saw a few minutes ago, which is also freely accessible if you want to go and have a look. Um, the main email address for our support team 
uh, the community management team that I'm part of is support at covenant.org, and we're happy to answer questions at any time about any anything you may want to know about the program, whether it is how to access it, how to carry out a specific function, or uh, how it might work for the type of, of research that you're doing. And finally, um, if anyone is interested in speaking to someone about what the options are for organizational accounts, uh, then our product team is always happy to discuss that with anyone who's interested. I want to thank our presenters for taking time to prepare and to introduce these software tools to help manage and analyze data for systematic reviews. We hope you will take a few minutes to give us some feedback about the webcast by filling out a brief evaluation. The link is listed in the slides. You only need to respond once after you have viewed all four videos. I also want to thank the AIR staff and representatives from the Campbell Collaboration who helped with planning and logistics. And of course, we want to thank Nidler for their support to offer these webcasts and other events.